Yo, Alex, Alex, Alex. What's up, man? You ever heard of O-Chain? Nah, I haven't. It's a cryptocurrency literally made to increase in volatility over time so that you can trade it and make gains on leverage exchanges. Yo, Alex, Alex, yo, Alex, the price is at 56.81. It's dropping, it's dropping, dropping, it's dropping. Yo, I think I'm going in, I'm going in, I'm going all in, I'm going all in. What's it at? It's at 56.50 right now. Yo, Alex, Alex, yo, Alex. Yo, yo, bro. Alex, yo, you see Bitcoin? Yo, shut the f up. So what's the difference, right? What's the secret? What separates a cryptocurrency millionaire, a Bitcoin millionaire versus a person that missed the boat. You know, we all know of that guy, maybe you've seen like a meme before or something like that, where he's like, yo, I sold my Bitcoin at $7. It'd be worth $32.6 million of today if I would have kept my Bitcoin. What's the difference between the guy that stuck it out, made a whole bunch of money, experienced these life-changing gains versus another guy that missed the boat, might maybe, you know, made a little bit of money, but missed that big parabolic swing. I'm gonna explain it to you guys in this video. We can uncover the secrets. It's pretty easy. I've, you know, experienced the life-changing gains for myself. You guys know my story. Um, and I've talked to a lot of cryptocurrency millionaires that have experienced ridiculous returns. So we can kind of windle it down. And I've done that for you guys in this video here. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about that secret, but let me just give you a brief overview. It's gonna be one word, and it's gonna be extremely simple, but don't miss it, okay? Don't miss it, it's the truth, okay? The, the difference between somebody that makes a whole bunch of money versus somebody that makes nothing or a little is knowledge. Knowledge. And I know it sounds like too simple, like oh, Alex, knowledge, come on, that's funny. That's funny, but let me explain to you my story. So for example, you know, when I originally started my first entrepreneurial journey, I was flipping phones, I was flipping iPhones, right? I was selling them um, on eBay, buying them on the street, Craigslist or whatever, fixing them up, flipping them. Made pretty good money, but you don't want to compete with like Apple. It's a big company. They don't want you fixing phones. So, you know, I kind of went out of business, had $7,500 to my name, and I decided to buy three Ethereum mining rigs, okay? And this is when Ethereum was worth like three bucks. It took me a week to make, um, and I knew I wanted to build this so I could have some income. I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Maybe some of you guys read that book, but I wanted to create this passive income on the side while I went to work so I get that paycheck and then I get that cryptocurrency to kind of sit on that cryptocurrency, right? And wait for the value to go up. So of course, you guys heard my story before. Um, ended up going up like crazy, made a whole bunch of money off of it. I experienced those life-changing gangs, okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you that is because if I would have, for example, instead of buying the mining rigs, I purchased the Ethereum itself, my knowledge level was way too low. My knowledge level for how much money I would have had, like $7,500 worth of crypto, yes, of course, I would have made way more money, way more money, like six to 10 times more money. But my knowledge level was way too low. I didn't know enough about cryptocurrency. Of course, back in the day, you know, three years prior, I was, you know, I was about to buy a, a Bitcoin mining rig, passed it up, you know. Um, but, you know, at that time, if I would have purchased $7,500 with crypto, you know, think about it. If Ethereum went from $7 to 90, I would have thought, wow, this is the best money I've ever made in my life. I'm a cash out, right? Because my knowledge level wasn't there. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because the reason I experienced it, I wouldn't say it's 100% luck because I did, I took the action to doing it, but it's because, you know, mining forced me to hold. It forced me to hold the cryptocurrency. I mean, of course, I could have sold it right then and there, but essentially when you're buying the rigs, it's harder to sell. You can't sell well, you could sell it. I sold my mining rig, but it's way harder to sell a mining rig than to go on an exchange and kind of just sell the Ethereum, right? So if I would have had $7,500, I probably would have cashed out and then I would have missed the boat on the 90 to the $1,400 per Ethereum, right? So when I say knowledge, you know, I really, really mean it, okay? The truth is most of you watching this video do not have the mental capacity to sit down and read a book, 
Okay, so this is the real underlying problem right here. It's not knowledge. You guys all know knowledge, right? We literally are living in an age of knowledge with the worldwide internet. You can kind of search up anything nowadays, learn anything. You guys are watching a video and learning something right now, right? You guys know knowledge. You can find the knowledge. But what's the problem here is your emotional control, your investing principles, okay? So in this video, I'm gonna be outlining all the investment emotional control principles that I use to increase my knowledge, to make the right decisions, and to experience these parabolic upswings. Guys, Bitcoin's in four-year cycles. If you are thinking on a year-to-year -year basis, you are wrong. You should be thinking on a four, five, even 10-year basis. I have comments in my YouTube channel of people talking about, they're, they're really getting mad that I'm, that I'm talking about in year-to-year, three-year pr price predictions. They're really, oh, in three years. What? What? Think about what your time frame is. And if it's less than a year, you are thinking wrong and you will fail. Now, the only thing we can really do here is control our emotions to do things that are actually beneficial in our life, to avoid all the distractions, to make the right decisions, okay? You guys, again, like I said, man, there's books out there, right? Like, for example, the, the Internet of Money. You guys know, you can Google search best Bitcoin books. I'll leave the link in the description of all my favorite books. Um, that I read in Bitcoin, but you can Google search. That's what I did. I Google searched it, bought it off Amazon, right? I'll leave the links in the description. You guys can get that. The attack of the 50 foot blockchain. This guy basically wrote a whole book on how blockchain sucks. Okay. To get, you know, opposing views, right? What gave me the emotional control to dive into these books? Bitcoin millionaires. I got audio books, people back in the day, you know, this is a good one right here. Bitcoin standard back in the day, you know, I was a below average student guys. If you didn't know, um, I went to a public school and I was so bad in the public school that my mom, you know, got my aunt, which is like on the you know, school board. She got my aunt to trick people into getting me into a technical school. And the day I stepped foot in there, I was literally on academic probation. Okay. I was literally failing all my classes. I hated reading. I hated studying, but now I consume like a book a week. Guys, if you look at my, like, look, this right here, this is my, you know, read again, 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 library. This is like, I read these books three to five times. If I have a problem, I go to these books. This is not my main library. If you go downstairs, I have hundreds of books. I have hundreds. I would say I have close to three to 500 books downstairs. I read a lot. I read more than any of my friends I've ever known. And the reason why I changed is because I developed these habits and these emotional control habits. So real quickly, guys, you know, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button because I'm about to give you the control chart. I literally set my time out to make this worksheet for you. It's right here, control chart. Nobody else is doing this in cryptocurrency. Nobody's giving you this value. Again, hit that subscribe button, like this video. If it actually gave you some, you know, real deal skills, people, not, you know, all those, <laughs> it's so crazy. It's so crazy what YouTubers would do for money. It's ridiculous. So this control chart here, right, basically has principles that clearly just, you know, line it out. And I made it pretty. I made it look good. So you guys can print it out. Put it on your desk, put it on your wall, do whatever you have to do. It's 100% free. I'm not charging any money. All you have to do is go to the link in the description below and sign up for the news. It's a newsletter, right? So you sign up for the newsletter. You're going to get all types of stuff. You guys heard me talk about my free newsletter before. I'm going to send you like hidden charts that I don't talk about my channel that doesn't make it to my channel. You know, all these principles, other principles that I talk about um, as well as special offers. You'll get it with my newsletter. Um, and then if you sign up, I'm going to send you this chart right now. So to follow me in this video, I highly recommend you guys download this chart, write in it. As you can see here, there's little boxes there. So you could talk about your experiences or you could take some notes. I made it easy for you guys to take some notes. So go ahead, again, download the control chart. It's very simple. Simple's better. Simple makes things work. I made it simple so you can print it out and you look at it in your face. Now we're gonna dive into, look, one, two, three, four, five, six principles here. But the seventh principle is extremely important. I'm going to teach you how to dopamine detox, okay? So you can get away from everything. I'm going to explain what I'm talking about. So basically, guys, emotional control is very, very simple. If you could break it up into parts. So let's go down to a chemical level, right? So emotional control is usually kind of correlated to something called dopamine. Dopamine is like a chemical naturally found that go into your brain's receptors. They make your body move. They give you motivation. I want you to think about the last time, you know, you got really motivated to go to the gym or you got really motivated to get some work done. It was kind of like a feeling, right? Think about it. It was like a feeling that you got and it made you want to work. And think about the times that you don't want to get anything done. It's a feeling. You just literally don't feel like doing it, right? You just don't feel like doing it. Okay. So that's primarily the play of, you know, dopamine in your head. Okay. So this dopamine 
is it's kind of like a high. That feeling you get, think of it like a high. It's just, you know, so I could explain it, you know, in an easy way. So that high, just like drinking alcohol, just like doing drugs, you get extremely resistant, okay? So you get a huge tolerance with your dopamine. Same thing with the dopamine. This is all scientific facts, right? There's actually this one study, I, I can't quote the exact name of it, but I'll give you the story. They basically got lab rats, right? They got these lab rats. They put something on their head that releases dopamine, okay? And then they put a button in front of the lab rat. So basically, the lab rat would go and press the button, right? They literally press the button, get this dopamine rush, right? They get this huge dopamine rush, and they feel good. And they kind of wanted to see what the rat would do and where he would go. So it ended up being the rat was just <laughs> smashing that dopamine release and just kind of habitually hitting that dopamine release, right? And I'm going to explain how this relates to you. They even went as far as putting kind of like a, a, you know, one of these things that zaps you, like a zap, you know, a trap, right? Where the rat would actually have to pass this electric fence and get hurt. They would hurt themselves so they can press the button and release this dopamine, okay? So how this relates to you is that you guys have these little cellular devices, right? You guys got video games, you got TV, you got Netflix, all this free information. You got, you know, entertaining YouTubers, right? All this information that is ridiculous is running up your dopamine. It's making your tolerance ridiculous. It's, it's overloading your brain, right? It's basically getting you, it, it actually works exactly like a drug. And if you kind of get off of it, it actually gives you withdrawal, right? So it's literally like a drug. So think about it, right? You wake up, what's the first thing you do? You're checking your Instagram. Think about it this way. You know, I can go to the, the app on my phone and click Instagram. I can unlock my phone, go exactly where Instagram's located and start scrolling on my feed without even thinking about it. Without even thinking about it. It's literally a habitual pattern. I could do it in less than two seconds. I'm sure you could do the same thing with whatever you know favorite app you use, right? And so all these play into, you know, using up your dopamine, this low quality information that you guys read on articles and everything like that, you know, uh, this entertainment that you guys are consistently invoked with in your life is basically overloading your brain and it's using up all your dopamine. That's the truth, right? It's literally like when you wake up and you look at your phone and you sit there for a half an hour, it's equivalent to taking like 10 shots before you even get up. Not only do you, are you guys extremely consistent with this alcohol, but you know, you guys are also, you know, getting messed up before the day, right? So let me explain. When you're reading a book, right? Which like I told you guys is the knowledge, right? The real knowledge here. This is serious stuff. Macroeconomics. Nobody wants to learn about macroeconomics, but guess what? Bitcoin is economics, right? Nobody wants to learn about, you know, technical jargon. Nobody wants to learn about the blockchain, but guess what? You invest money into it. All these things, these complicated topics that you will not take, you know, hours out of your day to learn is a low dopamine response. It's literally low dopamine to do, read a book. It doesn't make you feel good to read a book. Understanding Bitcoin on a deep level, right? Reading the right books, right? Which can be 20, 30 books. All these low dopamine responses get the back burner. They get the back burner. They are not a priority in your life because you have this habitual pattern that you've created with this dopamine drug binge that 99% of Americans, you know, are doing nowadays and you know in the world in general, guys. This is what the millionaires know. I'm telling you right now what the millionaires know, right? You guys wanted the truth. This is the truth. I know a lot of you are going to be like, "Oh, what's the, you know, ninja trick, you know, to, you know, trade cryptocurrency with the Martin stop. Stop. You're overdoing it. That is the truth. Lower your dopamine levels, and I'm going to explain to you exactly how to do that with these steps, right? So how do we stop, you know, overdosing our brain with, you know, these horrible, you know, habits that plague our life into making us unproductive? Now, one word I kind of resort to when I think about this, because it's going to be a big jump for you guys. It's going to be a little bit difficult. But if you look at it this way, it makes it a little bit less difficult. So it's called relevance, okay? So relevance is basically explaining that even if, you know, let's say, for example, you are rich, super rich. You have millions of dollars. You have a car. You have Lamborghini. You have all the you know prettiest girls in the world. Versus where you're at now, you will literally have around the same level of happiness, right? If nothing else changes, if you if only your financial well-being changes, you know you'll have the same amount of happiness. Now this concept is best explained by this book, and you can read a whole book on it, guys. Look, another book called *Man's Search for Meaning*, where basically this guy in a Nazi you know concentration camp, you know horrible life, you know he was getting basically tortured starved to death 
And there was this one moment that, you know, I kind of remember this one moment where he was digging through his soup and the soup was made literally, it, there was no substance in the soup. It was literally just water and they'll boil potatoes and meat and then they'll take the potatoes and meat out and just give them the nutrition water, right? That's what it would do. And he was, you know, horrible. Like his family died, like he's dying, starving. His life sucks. And he's going through his soup, drink, drinking his soup. And he found a little piece of potato. And when he found his little piece of potato, he ate it. And he was the happiest he has ever been in his whole entire life. He started laughing uncontrollably. And he wrote this book, right? And the reason why I'm telling you that is because, look, even in the most painful time of his life, the most sorrow he's ever witnessed, you know, you think of Nazi, you know, Germany, right? And concentration camp, and immediately pictures go into your head of this horrible life, right? Even in the worst hell that you can deal with, this guy was laughing uncontrollably, okay? And what does that mean? You know, no matter where you are, no matter where you are, you can find happiness, guys. You know, it's funny because I just got back from recording one of my best friends. He's running 100 miles. And this is a really good example of like relevance, right? So when you run something like that, he literally told me over and over again, he's like, it's going to change my life. It's going to change my life. Why are you running 100 miles? He's actually doing it specifically to raise awareness for COVID-19, uh, for, you know, the virus that everybody's talking about. He's literally raising awareness and he's going to donate all of that to the research. And also, also, of course, probably the most important reason why he did it, to experience that relevance, right? How is he gonna feel after he experienced that horrible pain? He's probably gonna feel on top of the world. After going through that much pain of running 100 miles, you know, maybe you're underestimating it. I'm gonna play the trailer now. That video is going to be crazy. Guys, go subscribe to his channel. Um, he's dropping it soon. One of my best friends. I'm going to be promoting his video because I shot it. Um, but yeah, guys, relevance is going to help your emotional control as well. So even if you train yourself to get away from your phone, even if you train yourself to get off the computer, stop watching Netflix, you're going to be just as happy. If not, in my opinion, I think it's a little, you get even happier because you know you get fulfillment out of life. You get the long-term goals that you're, you're shooting for, which in this case, you know, is Bitcoin, right? If you want to make money in Bitcoin, you're going to have to think long term. Four year cycles, people. If you don't know about four year cycles, you know, I'll leave some videos, links in the description below, but that's how Bitcoin works. The happenings every four years goes parabolic. Don't miss the parabolic run, please. Don't miss it by having this crazy dopamine, you know, shiny object syndrome, looking everywhere for shiny object. Oh, margin trading. Oh, you know, decentralized apps. Oh, you know, what's that new crypto? Don't miss the boat. By having shiny object, don't do it, okay, guys? So hopefully you've downloaded the worksheet by now. Let's go over the control chart together so I can explain to you kind of the different principles that will help you have the emotional control. This helps in everyday life, um, but I'm going to kind of base it towards cryptocurrency because I use it now. Um, I wish I would have known it before, but I use it now like on a daily basis to help me, you know, get to where I'm going, guys. I don't want to miss the parabolic run with little, you know, petty stuff. You know, I don't want to miss the big fish. Right? I don't want to miss the big fish. So how do you avoid shiny object syndrome you know, from distracting you from the big parabolic swings? First one, okay? distance yourself from the hype. Okay? You know, this is huge in cryptocurrency because we see all these guys you know, going on YouTube, going, making these articles. People really get caught up on the hype. Now, of course, you can make money right? if you're doing like, the day-to-day -day thing where you want to catch the hype before anybody else does and then make money on the upswing, sell it at the top. But... Like I've said before in multiple videos, I even talked about it and you know, uh, why you shouldn't day trade Bitcoin. I explained it in great detail. I'll leave the link in the description below. I explained it in great detail. Um, that's a zero sum game. Okay, That will help you lose the parabolic swings. right? That will distract you from the big gains. So distance yourself from the hype. All these hype things, right? 
You know, we've seen it with e-commerce where everybody wants to drop ship now. We see it with, you know, even right now, the, the, you know, the virus, I don't want to talk about, you know, for monetization issues. We see all this hype everywhere. Well, even though it's like a less than a 6% chance of dying for the majority of people that watch my video, you know, of course, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to downplay the severity of this virus, but just stay away from the hype because it will get you in this thinking pattern of thinking like the uncommon. Think about it, right? So think about like literally the price of Bitcoin going up. If you're at the bottom, you have thought like the uncommon. Why? Because nobody's buying it at the bottom. No one's literally buying it at the bottom. So if you buy it at the bottom, you have thought way far ahead of everybody else. Now, when you start buying it towards the top, like when Bitcoin was at 20K, you bought it at maybe 17,000, you are literally following the hype. So this is one of the best principles I can ever tell you guys. Stay away from the hype. Do the exact opposite of the hype. Actually invert the philosophy, which is another concept a little bit more in depth. I'm not going to talk about it, but let's go to the second one. So what I want you guys to do in here is talk, write some examples that I'm talking about, maybe some notes. Maybe you can talk about a time where you kind of followed the hype and you got burned for it. Whatever it is, you know, fill that up with notes, right? Uh, you know, I, you guys are listening to me, but don't get entertained. It's not for entertainment purposes. I'm actually trying to help you and change your life. Okay. So the second one is regain your sanity. Now, when you're making a decision, right? For example, this is a perfect situation. We saw Bitcoin just drop, right? Ridiculous. 60s, 60s percent. One of the big, biggest, you know, Bitcoin, uh, I guess you could say dumps in history. We saw leverage exchange, exchange people get burned. It was ridiculous. And you, you know it, right? You guys saw it. You experienced it. You felt it. Now, an emotional person with shiny object syndrome would have probably sat there and sold the Bitcoin. They would have made a quick decision. Now, I'm not saying selling the Bitcoin is always a bad decision. There might be certain times where you have to sell Bitcoin. But what I'm saying is that most people that are emotional would have made a decision like that. Now, what you want to do is sit back when you're making... This works for anything, guys. But you can use it for crypto. Sit back when you're about to make a, a life-changing decision, like selling all of your Bitcoin or something that's extremely hard to get yourself out of, like you want to start a new business or something, right? Sit back, think about your decision and come back to it in 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Regain your sanity if you're sleep deprived, if you don't have enough food in your stomach, right? Get yourself mentally stable, go work out. Think about it, sleep on it, right? Sleeping's a really big one. Don't be sleep deprived when you make decisions. That's really important. Think about it, regain your sanity, then come back to it and make your decision. That's a big one right there, right? Think about the times that you kind of compulsively bought something. It would have avoided that completely if you thought about it. And I'm, I'm guilty of this, guys. I spent $5,000 on a course in a day decision that I regret to this day that if I would have sat there and thought about it for 48 hours, I would have never purchased it, right? So the third one here, cross-pollinate sources, okay? So another thing, tribalism and cryptocurrency. Oh my... Don't get me started. Don't get me started, right? There's all these people that are involved in like one or two groups, right? And I have a group and hopefully you guys have joined that. I'm paying people to, you know, you know, interact and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, I don't want you guys to simply sit in my group and that's it. And don't listen to anybody else. I want you guys to go look at other sources, look at other information. Because this is where like essentially you get like these weird cults, right? So what happens is is you have an idea or a philosophy, right? For maybe a philosophy, for example, is like XRP, because I see it a lot with the XRP community. And there's nothing wrong with XRP, but I see this a lot. The XRP, oh, XRP is the greatest coin in the world. That's the philosophy, right? Then you kind of piggyback that off of another XRP guy. <laughs> so this XRP guy is like, yeah, it's the greatest because of this reason. And you're like, wow, it's even greater than I thought. So then you go look more, you find another reason, and then you send it back to that guy. It's the greatest because of this reason. And then he's like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. I'm going to go look more. And you guys are literally hyping yourself up. You're hyping yourself up. And it becomes like a cult. If you don't get any other opinion, if you don't buy the book that talks about how blockchain is horrible, if you don't get another perspective... You are guilty of not cross-pollinating sources. You are guilty of not doing your due diligence and researching a company, right? Of course, guys, I have a course that's going to teach you how to research it in depth. So if you want to get the discount now, it's like literally 90% off. Go ahead, you know, click the link in the description below the reason you're getting the discount because I haven't dropped it yet. But when I do drop it, just to get throw this out at you guys, you know, it's going to teach you how to research a company from start to finish. It's going to give you the fundamental analysis that most, I've never seen a YouTuber talk in this depth about fundamental analysis. There's no books written on it. Um, it's going to give you the unique ratios 
you know, and data science that I use to make predictions on different cryptocurrencies, altcoins, find those 100x altcoins. And it's also going to give you my complete portfolio. So I'm literally just going to put up a screenshot of my portfolio. And if it changes, I'm going to re-upload it so you can literally follow it. It's also going to give you a chance to kind of DM me or message me so I can research your coin. So it literally gives you all that uh, kind of get unlimited access to me as well as all my knowledge. But th that's a side tangent. Guys, cross-pollinate your sources, right? Look at different things. Watch different YouTubers. Watch different, you know, uh, videos. Read different books. Get every perspective. Read macroeconomics. Read books about gold. Read books about silver, right? Read books that talk good about fiat currency for what reasons. And then this is going to ultimately give you the best decision because you get your information from a whole bunch of pools, you know, a whole bunch of different perspectives. And you're not just gassing yourself up with your cult, right? So cross-pollinate sources, right? Go ahead, write it down. If you don't already have the worksheet, free newsletter below, go ahead and write it down, guys. Write it down. At what times did you make a bad decision because you didn't kind of, you know, check other sources, right? Now, out of sight, out of mind. Now, this is a good one here. This is a really good one. And I'm going to dive in more depth towards the end of this video. I'm going to give you like, it's called the, the dopamine detox. And I'm going to explain what that means. So basically, out of sight, out of mind means avoid all those people that are crazy. Okay. Avoid, you know, if you're in a group where it's really one-sided and, you know, they're kind of bashing you because you talk about another cryptocurrency, you know, the whole uh, gist here, guys, is just get away from it. If you don't even have to see it in the first place, that's the best way possible. You just avoid it and, like, put your phone down, right? Just don't look at the screen because it's going to lower your dopamine response, right? Get away from it. That's just the best way. That's, that one's pretty straightforward, okay? The fifth one here, focus on value. Of course, in my course, I teach you guys how to find the intrinsic value of a cryptocurrency. But focus on value. All right, this is, like, a very broad one. But when you look at a cryptocurrency, when you look at Bitcoin, like, there, remember, I don't know if you guys noticed, the, the market crashed. The market crashed. And then I made this video right here, right? And I'm going to go through the comments with you. I mean, some people are always going to be negative, right? We have a certain percentage of people that are just going to be negative no matter what. But if I come here right now and I show you guys this video, I got 11K views, which is pretty good for my channel. It's not the best, but it's pretty good for my channel. Um, and, you know, you, you got all these people that are like, you can go read it for yourself. But it's basically, I provided value in a time where people needed it the most. I literally explained to you the fundamental principles of Bitcoin, okay? Why Bitcoin is valuable, and it gave a lot of people comfort in their decisions, which, as you can see from the market, if you would have sold Bitcoin at the time, I, before I made that video, if you would have sold Bitcoin, you'd be down like 40%. You would have lost your money. Now we're back up. We're getting a little, you know, we bounce off that support there and we're seeing some higher highs, guys. We're seeing Bitcoin make higher highs which is a really bullish sign in the fact that the whole market and the whole world's going down and Bitcoin's making higher highs, right? If you would have made an emotional decision, you would have missed out on these gains, right? You would have acted immediately, right? So I guess you can say the moral there, guys, is focus on value, right? Understand where the value came from and you making a decision in the first place when it comes to Bitcoin. Before you sell your Bitcoin, before you make a dramatic change, understand why you did it in the first place. Find what it really is. Boil it down to the most fundamental root as you possibly can. That's what I did in that video. It gave a lot of people inspiration, motivation, and it helped a lot of people out, right? There's a reason why I made that, okay? And then the last one, foot off the gas. Again, these all kind of play into each other, but relax, man, relax. Make Do three things a day. If you're doing more than three things a day, it's just way too much, guys. Don't run through your errand list. You know, do that on Saturdays or something. Prioritize, relax. Sometimes you need to sit back, you know, take a deep breath, meditate, do some yoga, go work out. Okay, just like I said before, relax, stop making so many decisions, lower the amount of decisions that you make a day. Okay, so my most important, you know, in my opinion, the best part. Okay, so when you have, again, like these dopamine responses, you're going through your phone, you're, you're watching these movies, right? You're getting all this, you know, dopamine rush to your head and your tolerance is really high. We have to lower the tolerance. We have to do a detox, just like you would get off alcohol or get off drugs. You have to detox yourself from dopamine. How do you do that? First thing. I know it's going to be really hard for people. First thing, put your phone away for a day. One day. If it's an emergency, people are going to, you, they're going to contact you. Somebody, your friend's going to hit you up. Somebody's going to contact you if it's serious. If it's that serious, you will, so you're going to know about it. Okay. I promise you. Put your phone on airplane mode, turn it off, put it away for a whole entire day. And I am so guilty of this, guys. I am so guilty of the dope. I'm not perfect. I'm so guilty of, you know, getting all these dopamine responses and, you know, being all over the place, got two screens, got this, I got to do this, da, da, whatever. 
I'm guilty of it too, okay? But sometimes I sit back, I put the phone away, I throw it out of the room, put it on silent, put it on airplane, put the phone away. Stop watching movies. I know this is gonna be hard for you guys, but if you do it, I'm telling you, you're gonna feel it. Stop watching movies. Stop looking at the computer screen. I mean, some of you, you know, have to do it for work. Don't go to entertainment, right? You know, if you, if you do, lower the amount of actions, right? Just watch one video or read one article, right? Lower it as much as you can. Do the detox. Get all this stimulus out of your life, okay? And if you do it for long enough, what's gonna happen is the next day that you wake up, you're gonna be really receptive. Okay, don't ruin it though. Don't like go on a huge de detox and get all the stimulus out of your life and then literally wake up the next day and go straight to your phone. Don't do that. What you wanna do is go straight to productivity. Okay, wake up, go straight to productivity. You're gonna see, that you're gonna feel your body you're gonna literally feel your body, get motivated, and you're gonna knock out whatever that priority is, whether it's working out, getting some work done, it's gonna be hammered. It's gonna be hammered. And you could do this every week. You could literally do this every week, right? Whatever your most productive day is, like Monday. Just throw all of it out of the window, detox your dopamine, get away from it. There's actually, at one point, I was planning on going to a retreat where for 10 days straight, it was just silent meditation, where no phone, no nothing, no communication with the outside world. You cannot even say a word. You can't even say a word and you just meditate for 10 days straight. That would have been the best dopamine, you know, I guess you could say detox in the world. And all of these will, you know, basically push you to make the right decisions, which will in turn help you acquire more knowledge, which one is reading the book, right? The produ productivity we're talking about, read a book, read a book, read what really matters about crypto. The hardest part about crypto is that learning curve. Most of you don't know about Bitcoin long-term because you haven't passed that learning curve. It's just the truth. If you want to learn about Bitcoin, pick up a book. Go click to the, you know, down below, I have literally my top five books in cryptocurrency. Buy all five of them. Fix your learning curve. And when you fix your learning curve, I'm telling you right now, you will, you're going to experience those, you know, parabolic runs because you're not going to sell. You're not going to go trade. You're not going to margin trade right? You're not going to get into decentralized apps. You're not going to put your money into these crazy cryptocurrencies. You're not going to listen to the overall consensus and follow the hype. You're going to make the right decisions because these books are beautifully crafted to help you understand the right things. The internet's all over the place, people. Take a step back, read something that's beautifully executed, and experience what millionaires have experienced. This is the secret, people. Emotional control. That is the secret. But that's it for this video, guys. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism. Subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll catch you in the next one.